Thanksgiving service celebrating the life and the work of the late, the Honourable David John Howard Thompson, QCMP, Prime Minister of Barbados. Today, we reflect on his invaluable contributions to our nation and the wider Caribbean diaspora. We give thanks for all that he's done, especially the influence over the much acclaimed Family First program, which he founded in Barbados. We remember in our prayers his wife Mara and their three daughters, Nisha, Oya, and Osa Marie. The Thompson family could not be with us today because of the illness of Mr. Thompson's mother, Margaret. We remember her in our prayers and ask for her speedy recovery.
and its glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is seated on high? Who looks down? Who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? Who rises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap? To make them sit with princes, with princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home and making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Here ends the first reading. The Lord of Fire will now take us through the musical into the Lord for that tender mercy's sake.
Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, Jesus called his disciples together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be ministered, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for me. You may be seated. First, I must give my respect to the moderator, Reverend B. Hunt, and to the host. Minister of this church, Canon S. Downing, and all the other members of the clergy. Also to His Excellency, the High Commissioner for Paris, and all members of the diplomatic corps. It's good to be here, including, of course, fellow Barbadians. <laughs> it's good to be here. I'm, I've never been among so many Barbadians since I left Barbados so many years ago. So it seemed to be a frightening experience. <laughs> um, most of my years have been spent among Jamaican folks as a minister. So I'm trying to get used to my own people. That's very embarrassing, isn't it? However, the lesson before us today is a um, story. It's a, quite a remarkable story, really. Um, let me say that we're here today to celebrate and to give thanks for the life of our former leader, his, the Honorable QC David Thompson, former Prime Minister of Barbados. And um, it is a thanksgiving service, but there is a remarkable story here in the book of Matthew. Uh, pretending to the lesson which I've just read. But before I go into that, any depth of that, this particular story, let me try to explain, to give you a background to it. Jesus said to his disciples, the Son of Man is going to Jerusalem and he will be betrayed by the high priests and the scribes. And then he will be handed over to the Gentiles he will be crucified and he will rise again from the dead. And there were two sons, two sons of two, who were disciples of Jesus, uh, the sons of Zebedee, James and John. And the mother of these two young men ministered to Jesus of his daily needs. She was one of those ladies. And they thought probably that they had. Uh, were giving up all they had. They had left their fishing boats, their nets, and were serving Jesus for three years. And they thought the time had come, having listened to him, that he was, the Son of Man was going up to Jerusalem. They thought that he was now going to take back the kingdom from the Romans and become king. And so on, they said to their mother, listen, in my own words, mom, uh, uh, you've been serving the Master for these three years. Uh, would you say to him for us, ask him if it's possible to do a certain thing for us? Tell you in a minute. And the mother agreed and came to Jesus and said to him, in fact, the Bible said she would worship him, giving him his, his due. And she said to him, Lord, would you allow my two sons, one to sit at your right hand and one at the left, in your kingdom? And Jesus turned to the two boys, two young men, in the presence of their mother and said, Do you know what you have really asked? <coughs> and he said, Listen, are you able to drink of the cup that I drink of 
and to be baptized in the baptism that I will be I'm baptized of. In other words, are you prepared to drink of the cup of suffering and be baptized in the baptism of affliction? And they said, yes, we are well able to do it. These young men were asking for honor rather than service. They wanted to sit with Jesus on his throne on the two sides of him. Hmm. It's quite amazing. Jesus said to them, listen, what you ask, I cannot give. It is my father's prerogative to do that. I cannot give it. And then when the other disciples heard what they had asked, what the mother had asked, and so on, they were, the Bible said they were very they were filled with indignation. And right there, Jesus knew that there was going to be a, polit a religious political argument. Right at the moment he was about to go to Jerusalem to pay the price of man's redemption. They thought this was the end of it. He will now sit in his kingdom. And these two young men will sit side by side. This was just the beginning of the sufferings of Jesus, not the end. So when he saw that they were going to argue, he called them aside very gently and said to them these words. The words which have just read, he said to them, but Jesus called them uh, with him and said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority over them. And in verse 26 he said, but this shall not be so among you. Whosoever be great among you, let him be your Minister. In other words, you are not to teach the subjects. In fact, you are to teach the subjects of the kingdom and to suffer with them. You are not to lord it over them, according to 1 Peter 5 3, but to labor in it. Forgetting the pomp and the grandeur of the, of the princes of the Gentiles, it is your duty as Christ's disciples to serve one another for the mutual edification. This includes both humility and usefulness. The way to be great and chief is to be humble and serviceable. The Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but he came to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. What Jesus was actually teaching these young men, it was instructing them about ambition. And we all ought to be ambitious indeed. So we see then that service is the prelude for greatness. And then the nature of true greatness is then service. The Gentiles lord it over their subjects. But Jesus said, no, this must not be so among you. So the nature of true greatness is service. And the model of true greatness is Jesus. The Bible tells us that he went about doing good. When the cripples saw him, they started walking, opening the eyes of the blind, raising the dead, Healing the sick. He went down to Capernaum and took the word of God in the synagogue and read the scriptures and found because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to set up liberty them that are bruised and preach the acceptable year of the Lord. It takes the anointing to preach the gospel to the poor. It takes the anointing to heal the brokenhearted. It takes the anointing to set at liberty those that are bruised. And we have many people in our world that are bruised and broken hearted. It takes the anointing to be service, to be among the people. If we want to be great, then we must get down and serve the people. And this brings me to the late Prime Minister, His Excellency, 
QC, Prime Minister of Barbados, um, David Thompson. David Thompson, in, the, in, in fact, it was Robert Brand, I think it was. He said, The purpose of life is a life of purpose. And the late Prime Minister David Thompson lived a purposeful life by giving of himself to the people of Barbados, serving the people for the good of all. He cared for the marginalized of society. In Luke Gospel chapter 10, verse 29 to 37, we have a great story. The Bible speaks of the story of the Good Samaritan who ministered to the wounded man on the Jericho Road. His heart was touched and he was not afraid to deny himself. And that is why we have this sound in our, one of our choruses, If I Can Help, Somebody, as I pass along, then my living will not be in me. And so, David Thompson was a model then of political greatness. His motive was to make Barbados a model of greatness in the Caribbean. I understood there's a national strategy plan for Barbados to make it an excellent place. And so David Thompson, with that kind of vision, means that he was a man of a vision, of a vision. We ask them, what is a vision? Or what is a vision? A visionary is a person who is not practical. You cannot be a practical person if you are a vision. A person given to imagining and dreaming dreams. A person who has a vision of the unknown, of future things. And to make Barbados great means that he was a visionary. We think of such people like um, the late Abraham Lincoln, who saved the nation and ended slavery. We think of Lee Kuan Yew from Singapore, who took a small island like Barbados, and has made it one of the most powerful countries in the world economically. I hope to God that people from Barbados can think of that. Let it be your model. We think of Nelson Mandela, held South Africa out of apartheid to become the strongest economy in Africa. And so we have had many great um, visionaries in science and so on and so on. And then we had the great Martin Luther King in his um, speech at the Lincoln Memorial and over 100,000 people were gathered together. He said, I have a dream. He said, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day black men and white men, rich men, Jews and Gentiles, Catholic, Protestants and Catholics, will hold hands together and sing with the old Negro spiritual free at last, free at last, thank God and free at last. And he didn't stop there. He said, I have been to the top of the mountain, and I have seen the promised land, and my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He said, I will not, I may not get there with you, but I've got to go back to the valley. You see, there are multitudes in the valley of decision, multitudes in the valley of the two hearts are broken, who are poor, who are living in the streets and screaming in the streets. And Jesus gave an example to his disciples, if you want to be great, then you must get down. You see, the thing is with the Good Samaritan is that he got off of his horse or donkey and he got down, he poured in the oil and the wine. He took him to an inn and said, listen, I will pay the fee. When I come again, if it costs more, I will pay the balance. And we have this psalm in our church. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road. He poured in the oil and the wine, the 
wine that restoreth the soul. You see, the oil speaks of healing, the oil speaks of the anointing, and the wine speaks of rejoicing. When you are sick, you are sick. And when you are healed, you rejoice. So we thank God. We pray today that as we remember our late Prime Minister who was a vision, we who are, have the opportunity, like the good Samaritan, a light from our aloofness, our donkey of aloofness, get down because service is the prelude for greatness. If you want to be great, be among the people. Feel what the people are feeling. Feel their hurts. Sick with them. I understood that David talks and sat with the people. He was among the people. He would turn up at places where they were unexpected. The prime minister will sit among the poor. And that is the secret of greatness. Jesus said, it is the prelude. If you want to be great, forget the pomp and the pride of the Gentiles and the grandeur. Get down. And I say this in closing, even if you never hear me again. All of you come to Mary. Get off your donkey of aloofness. Get down into the valley. But they have broken pieces in the valley. Martin Luther King said, I've got to go back to the valley. God bless you.
My friends, we trust God to care for us. And as we pray, please respond with the words and bold after each prayer. Our Heavenly Father has promised through the Lord Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us therefore pray for the church and the world, and let us give thanks to God for his goodness. We pray for the Church of God in every place, and the Church leaders and all the people of God, that they will serve the common good and be a beacon of light to people everywhere in every place. Remembering of the 
define our love models, and in particular, the late Prime Ministers, the right excellent Errol Barrow, and the right honourable David Thompson, Senator Barbara Tate, Jeff Jones, and Ralph Trigger. We give thanks for their life and work, and pray that they will rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord,
This service is a thanksgiving service for the late Prime Minister, the Honourable David, David Thompson. Thank you for the Reverend Billings, who is new to us also. Reverend Billings is a pastor of the New Testament Church of God based in Southampton. He also leads the Bible study group at the Pepper Pot Caribbean Centre, Lightwork Road, every Thursday, where 90% of the members are Barbadians, but he hasn't been in contact with so many in one group. <laughs> so that's good. Thank you also to Reverend Bethany Hunt. Thank you very much. Reverend Hunt worked with myself and the subcommittee, Monica Warren. Jeanette Hill to put the service together. A very, very big thank you and appreciation to all the organizations and associations. Um, I would have to list them, name them all because they've been very good at helping me with this service. It's the Barbados Overseas Community and Family Association, the Barbados Overseas Nurses Association, Foundation UK, the Barbados Cultural Organization, the Morganites, the Democratic League of Women, the Barbados Family Association, Ready, Commonwealth School Old Scholars Association, the Allen Alumni UK, and Unity Association. Thank you to the Bone Choir, Eugene Phillips, and thank you all very much for taking part and making this service a success. The organist, Mr. Andy Seal and Nathan Children. Thank you to our ushers and all those who provide the refreshments. Today concludes a week of activities in Barbados in memory of the late Prime Minister. And today we are here as a family of Barbadians to also remember the late Prime Minister. Thank you all once again for making this possible. Before we leave to go for refreshments, can you all please take all your belongings with you when we go for refreshments because the, um, the church will be closed at this, this part. Also, there will be announcements being made, so it would be appreciated if everyone can stay at least for a little while until the notices have been said. Thank you all very much. Um, you know, Mass says come back from Broadway, it was all being funny. And, <laughs> and uh, I just want to really take some opportunity to thank her. She's been around the group in kind of working with the associations and getting the service to her. So thank you, Mass.